Yes, yes. Welcome to another episode of the Rabbit Season Podcast. Rabbit right here, uh, produced by my brother, Jay Whitey. Um, this, is, uh, this is crazy because this wasn't um, one of the things that we had like planned out on the calendar as far as doing this show. But just in conversation and everything that's going on here, also at our, our shop, our home base, our studio, it just seemed to make a lot of sense. And especially when you guys hear, you know, what this interview is about, um, you'll see why. But I'd like to introduce my friend. Matt. I've known this guy for shit, probably, uh, what, thirty over 30 years, um, which is crazy because I'm only 31. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 because we're we. the same age. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we are both th- no, but uh, um, known each other for a long time. Uh, we got reacquainted. I mean, we've been in contact, uh, luckily through social media and things like that. See each other every once in a while. Been through a lot of stuff together over the years, so it's like we're, it's like we never skipped a beat. But the thing is, been reacquainted through now um a partnership here at our shop our home base and um he happens to be in the um what is the proper terminology for the field you're in well we're in the nursing field but the mental health yes and it's uh, yes and there's a lot of important things that are going on now and, and things that need to be discussed but go ahead and introduce yourself bro well i'm i'm roman um and i'm the owner of mental status clothing company yes uh i'm a lpt which is you know most people don't know what that is but uh i'm a psychiatric technician which is uh pretty much equivalent to like almost like an lvn but in the psych world so uh you know we work at a psychiatric hospital and uh pretty much deal with a lot of mental mentally ill individuals and um and that's me um Mm -hmm. started this little clothing line to kind of bring a little bit of awareness about mental illness and trying to, you know, trying to get the word out in a, in a different light. And, and see, that's kind of what I was going to ask too, is that right there was the purpose for it just then you said, I, um, to bring awareness to it. Yeah. And, but see now with the clothing and everything, cause I, I do want to, um, you know, talk a little bit more about the clothing before we dive into some different things here, right. but, but why do you, did you feel it was important to get that awareness out? Um, was it the times we're in or just because not enough people are doing that? Yeah, you know what? It's, it, you know, it, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. So, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to go back a little bit. Yeah. Right. So uh, I have about uh, maybe about 20 years working in mental health and I mainly worked with uh, with teens. Right. And so for like the first maybe 15 you know, maybe 12 to 15 years of, of dealing with, you know, mentally ill teenagers, you know, it's not kind of, it started hitting me hard. Right. You know, and not, not only, you know, because of, of like the stress that, it, you know, that comes onto us, but hearing the stories of, of young kids, you know, from the age of, you know, from four to, you know, 17, cause that's like, you know, the area that I work in. Right. Um, but hearing like one story after another of just all the like horrific stories that I mean you can't even imagine and, and I'm sure we're gonna get into this. We'll stuff. get into this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it was daily uh-huh. coming to work, clocking in, and you know, I'm gonna be raw about this, right? You know, it's it's tough to handle, you know. I mean, for for those of us that have kids and anybody out there, for you to hear these horrible stories, go home and then just be normal with your kids, with your family. So, you know, after after a few years, and this is you know, a lot of years, right? I was like, you know, something's got to change. You know, why aren't these kids talking about it a little bit more? I don't I don't know what, you know. Like before it gets to that point. Yeah, or like, whatever. you know, yeah, why, yeah. why isn't it, you know, back in the day, you know, when we were, you know, when we were kids, right? When we were struggling, you know, we, you know, we hit up our mom, we hit up our pops, we hit up our, our, our boys and stuff, right? Because um, we were, you know, we were okay with that. But now... It, it, you know, mental health and, and illness has such a stigma because, you know, and, you know, who, who knows what it is, it, it, whether it's social media, whether it's, you know, what you see on TV or just, you know, just the times have changed. Right. Back at back in the day, you know, like, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Right. If, you know, if I was sad, you know, you know, my brother, you know, one of you guys, you know, somebody would be like, fuck's wrong with you. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And, and, but that was our method. Like of, tough love, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it was, th- but that, that sparked something. Right. Because you asked me 
what the fuck is wrong with you? That was that was that that did it. That and was I, enough. Yeah. That was enough to for me to say like, yeah. Oh man, like, like dude, I'm sad because of this, or like, hey, you know, it might be something stupid, or it might be something serious, but at least it, it allowed me to do that, right? What's happening now is, you know, you know, teenagers, you know, and I don't want to speak for everybody, but you know, from what I see, it's like they don't feel comfortable saying what's wrong. You know. You know. Which is crazy you say that because what I noticed too is like. I don't know if I mean I, I've been hearing more and more like these days lately about suicide stories than I ever have when it, when we were younger. Yeah, it, I, I it, hear a lot about people like some people that somebody knows they committed suicide. Oh man, you like, have no idea. Crazy, this this is a, this is you know so so the 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 place I work at you know it's a it's a it's a acute psychiatric facility. We hold up to 30, 30 kids right from the ages of four to seventeen, and on a regular basis we're hearing you know, 17, 18, 20 stories every single morning of kids that have tried to commit suicide, have thought about suicide, um, contemplated suicide, planned out suicide. And we're like, why? You know, and it's problems, uh, uh, you know, some some legit problems, right? Some other problems of, like, you know, kids that just never learned how to deal with, you know, uh, adversity, Maybe obstacles. They don't have nobody to talk to. There somebody they, to maybe they don't them. have anybody to talk to. I mean, you. I mean, there's. I mean, we can sit here and talk about all the reasons of of yeah. why or why not, right? But why aren't we reaching out? Why aren't we, you know, asking for help, right? So again, one of one of the common reasons was I was embarrassed. I didn't know who to talk to. Like I don't want anybody to know I'm depressed. I don't want anybody to know I'm anxious. I'm hanging out with my boys and I'm on the football team. And I'm depressed, you know, Hey, you know, I'm dating a bunch of girls, but yet like, I don't have any confidence, yeah. you know, uh, on the girl side, it's like, you know, I'm the most popular girl here, but yet like, I feel so insecure. Like these are yeah. the stories that yeah. we're hearing all the time, <laughs> yeah. but why weren't they asking for help? Why didn't they mm -hmm. ask for help at the beginning? It's cause there was, a, there wasn't enough like education or there wasn't enough confidence in them or the stigma of what mental health is. Well, and then and then that's the thing, too, again, to just tie back into the clothing here, mental status clothing. And again, we were the grand opening. Um, by the time you guys hear this, it'll already happen. But um, I'm real proud that we're working together. It, it brings the topic up. But bringing awareness to it, right, is is probably the first step that needs to happen before anybody to recognize that yeah. it's more of a problem that we all are ignoring like you said and not saying you're ignoring but it's easy for us sometimes to go home and then you know and then uh we go about our our lives like we didn't just see what we saw but but also because we have to you can't go home and you know um kind of show that i guess um the, the state you're in all the way to your kids because then you want them to, like, true, okay, true. what what's my dad? What's wrong with my dad? Yeah, we also have to put up that front. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you're still, you still got to maintain, I guess, and it's for purpose of, you know, somebody's watching you, bro. Imagine. Yeah. So, imagine that, right? So imagine us as adults. We do that, mm -hmm. right? So, we put up this front, yeah. right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. we have we have people that are looking up to us, right? We have, you know, like I have my son, I have my daughter that looked up to me, you know, like as we were growing up and stuff, right? Yet, you know, we carry this burden with us, right? We're older and we dealt with adversity growing up the yeah, way we, yeah. we did grow up, right? Yeah. You know, we, we dealt with all of that. And so we, we were taught that, you know? But what, what about the people that w were never taught that? Yeah, that's what it is. You know, so how, how is it, you know, we all, we all remember growing up, we always had either one friend or, or, or somebody we knew that was struggling and stuff, right? But we never had, like, the knowledge that we have now of as far as what was going on, right? Now we could probably put it together now. Now I think about, like, oh, man, like, homeboy way back in the day. Oh, yeah. He was I, probably depressed. Oh, I bro. never even thought about you it. And how, we were making fun of you him. You know how many times I've thought about that? And, yeah. and now that because – and see, here's the thing, too. That's just – W the reality is that's that's what kids are going to do. It's mm -hmm. just part of growing up. People get made fun of, right? But we don't see till later because we are actually decent human beings. <laughs> like we, I've, We're all right. We're I've, all right. Yeah, I've, li I've literally <laughs> gone back in my head and go, damn, dude, like – I fucking st I was still bagging on this cat like yeah. you know and then like no, uh, and it's like I, I thought about that too sometimes when I go down I remember when I like you know kids are, are mean you know and I remember in elementary like, certain times like but sometimes that's just like a defense because you know they're trying to make fun of me too so 
so whatever. So you, you just go back at them, you know, and sometimes like some people don't have, have as much wit as other people. Yeah. And, and so it makes it look like you're bullying or you're mean. <laughs> but if you say it like something. Oh, like, perspective, you know, is, perspective is huge in the in, in nowadays. Right. Yeah. Because with the way we perceive things way back in the day, you know, if you were being made fun of, you know, and again, you know, this is my this is my opinion. You know, you, you know, people don't agree with it, with with it all and stuff. But when I made fun of you. It's because you were my boy. Oh, yeah. It's because we lo we loved each other and we, you know, hey, you know what? But it, if somebody else made fun of you, oh, I yeah. got your exactly. back. Exactly. Hey, bro, we, weren't we just talking about that in random combo, too? Because we still have this, uh, this group text going with a bunch of the homies from fucking, again, 30 years ago yeah, when, yeah. when we were all one, when we all met. But, um, you know, uh, but we still got this group text going and. Bro, like we literally, I mean, that's all it is almost all day, <laughs> except except for an event coming, like oh, so and so's birthday. The only time when people get so, nice, get so and so's <laughs> birthday this this weekend. But all we do is clown, bro. And yeah. It, but like you were saying, it's like, but we're used to each other, and we know. And then the other thing is, we've been through, you know, fights together, fighting other people. We've been through a lot of things together, so we know it's all in fun. And I guess maybe that's the difference, because. You know, we say some pretty cruel shit, but again, like you said, if somebody else said that to my homie, right. there'd be a, I'd have a problem. Like, yeah. So of course, but the whole thread of baggy and the next one, hey, happy birthday to your son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right, yeah. After right after that, after yeah. yeah. <laughs> and 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 matter of fact, you know, shout, on that note, I just want to say shout out to the homie Dre, because when this comes out, he's gonna listen yeah. to it butt naked. <laughs> <laughs> I just that's how I just had to say that. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, and, hey, and, and to you, Dre, hey, you know I got I got I got a lot of love for you. You yeah, know, yeah, he, yeah. he's one of my biggest supporters. Oh yeah. That's, that's my daughter's that's my daughter's god godfather. Uh -huh. And you know what? I mean, you know, he, he is a legit guy and stuff. But yeah. we will continue to make fun of you oh, yeah. every yeah. single day. Sorry, Dre. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. We're all love saying you, sorry bro. now. Sorry. <laughs> love you, bro. <laughs> uh, hey, so no, uh getting back to the thing though. Uh, obviously we're we're never gonna get anywhere if we don't first um uh show awareness to the situation first it, it, let's address that it's there it's a problem and then let's start to figure out ways but um obviously i like i was saying is you're with your experience and everything and having empathy and being a decent human being like um you're ready for the conversation you've you have the experience to back it up um was that also, you know, part of why you put out the brand um, so someone can ask a question and you can start the conversation there? Yeah, uh, I mean, 100%, 100%. You know what? I mean, what? So, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, the idea came from this. It was like, you know, how, how do we give people a little bit of confidence to even, even talk about it? Because, mm -hmm. you know, what, we could throw out there all day long, like, hey, you know what? Like, talk to a therapist, you're gonna see commercials, talk to a psychiatrist, go get help, end the stigma. But that doesn't bring you confidence, right? But hey, you know what? Hey, you look you look cool as hell in that fucking hat. Like, oh shit, that's a fucking cool shirt. You know, or, you know, a homeboy looks great in this hoodie and, and this combo that he's wearing. And that, that, that hoodie says, fuck depression. I'm with that guy, right? Or, you know, th this hat says, 5150 oh shit like oh that's cool right like so anyways that's what it kind of came from it was like you know why not create a little bit of a look that you know it might be it might be offensive it might look cool or it might just be like full-on respect right but it is it's gonna trigger some type of like conversation you might be offended by by what i'm wearing Right. But you might come up to me and be like, hey, you know, what? why do you have that on? Like my son was, you know, on a hold for 51. I, I was just going to say that it, 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 and we'll get into that. Keep going. But I, w I wanted to ask if that's happened. I'm sure. Oh, it yeah. Has. yeah. Oh, I mean, it happens all the time. Yeah. But you know what? But again, because we we are able to talk about it, mm -hmm. it changes that that feeling. You know, I mean, I could talk to anybody about something that they don't know and something that they just, you know, they, they saw and made a comment on. And if they don't have any knowledge about it then you know then where does your conversation go it's you know empty con an empty conversation right but you could ask me hey you know what like well what do you think of people that been placed on hold then i could tell you hey you know what somebody that goes on a hold it's be maybe it's beneficial maybe it's not being placed on a hold can save your life it could also not do anything for you 
you know what? I mean, again, this is the reason that we created this brand. We created a brand or a look, I should say, right? That maybe is going to trigger a conversation, you know? Maybe maybe someone's going to say, you know what? I like that. I like that hat. You know what? I got anxiety. I, you know, I deal with depression. You know what? We all get, we know what emotion is like. We all have emotions. We got feelings. You know what? We could be tough as nails. It doesn't fucking matter, right? At some point or another, you know what it's, what it's like to be sad. We've all, yeah. we've all lost family members, friends. We've all dealt through some type of trauma, right? The, the hardest person, anybody that's listening or anybody here knows is still going through the same shit we but yeah they just don't show it the same way that That's you know it. and yeah. and and so how how else do we get that message across like you know i, I tell some of the kids i work with right i'm like I, I respect you more and i think you're stronger if you ask for help then you try to deal with things on your own mm -hmm. yeah remember that interview we did with uh Cuete yesca yeah he's a um you know he's a he's big, you know he's like an actor now but mm -hmm. um, but you know he's kind of you know he kind of looks has the yeah. look and all that yep. but he was saying even because he, he suffered from a lot of that. And he said, too, that uh, he sees some of the hardest looking cholos that you would see cr literally crying. Yeah. Like talk, like talking about. Well, like, well like think of this. OK, so let, let's like I don't even know if it's called if I'm going to say this right, but I'm going to say it. OK, so those of us that that work out that would hit the gym. Right. When you're going to max out and you're going to do the most that you can. Right. Who do you need by you? You need a spotter. Don't you need a spotter? What's going to happen if you don't reach that goal, right? That weight's coming down on you, right? Mm -hmm. But with a spotter, you build confidence. Even the idea of somebody using their fingers to just touch that bar, it changes. It changes what it does to you mentally and physically. Be because you know that, like, um, there's some security just, there. Just in case I happen to go back, like, <laughs> At least a fool's somewhat close if the shit lands on right, my throat. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I know. I know what you mean. But think about that metaphor, right? That mm. metaphor is that's what life is like, right? So we need a little bit of help. I don't, you know, I can't be fully successful on my own. I mean, I hope I can be, but I'm okay being successful with the help of guys from the B side. Oh, hell yeah. Cuff em Clothing, which we just yeah. teamed up with, right? right. The goalkeeper. My, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> But our friends and family, right? Like, hey, dude, the more support we have, w w you know, what does that do to you? Yeah. It, yeah. And it makes you stronger. It makes you more confident. And you got somebody that's got your back that's going to help you, right? This how, that's how mental health works. And they're backing the message as well. Yeah. By, yeah. by, by getting this, you're also accepting that you're acknowledging that I mean, it is an issue, man. Yeah. And, so, and I mean, you know, it, it again, you know, addressed. We, we don't want to, like, sugarcoat it. You yeah. know, like, mental health has its, you know... It, it, it's it's ugly side obviously right but it's got you know it's got its good side too you know what i mean i mean think about the last time that you got really anxious and nervous but you knew how to handle that you knew how to control a little bit of your well, anxiety I use my meds I have, I have certain meds that i use for that <laughs> no but it's but it's true it, it is it, 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 could, it could be it could be meds it could be socialization it could be talking to somebody it could be you know knocking out some push-ups right it could be it could be not uh what's the uh, of not socializing it could be just chilling by yourself yeah, for a little while like, meditating you know, meditation but, but yeah. that's 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 the key it's finding something that works for you yeah you get what i'm saying yeah so anyways you know i mean probably rambled on and stuff but that's that's this is what this is about and stuff, right? It, it's striking up a conversation and not being embarrassed anymore, right? Because yeah. with the kids that I work with, a, a big majority of the number of kids that came through us that we asked, like, hey, you know what? How long have you been dealing with this? And then they said, well, I've been depressed for, you know, three years. And then, you know, we tell parents because we, you know, we had to call, you know, for parents and ask them for consent and get a little history. And then parents would be like, Oh my God, three years. I just noticed it the last couple months. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, man, like how, how did you not notice? But you know, again, it's something that we don't know. People so are good at hiding emotions. Oh, well, of course. Well, well, and maybe, and maybe not so much. It's, and there's what I'm getting to next is maybe all the time they're not hiding their emotions, but there's no one there to recognize what's going on. And, and, and that's what I was kind of going to get at is, you know, we're, we're talking about kids and youngsters and things and, you know, a lot of times, like some of they, they kill themselves over, uh, you know, um, social media, bro. Like 
the like the need for uh people's acceptance through likes and and stuff on so this which is a whole other concept for us because we it's grew a up new, it's a whole we, new life yes we grew up in a yeah. different era obviously but it's that's a serious thing too and and i don't see what I, what i'm kind of wondering is from your experience is that um need for for acceptance like where exactly does it always just come from there's no one at their direct because i don't think that's the case i think sometimes they do get you know maybe not excessive attention they get their attention but something about that social media and that the popularity and that it, it it flips a switch it's weird dog and, and i just kind of wanted to get your opinion on that because yeah. but uh, and again i will say probably the majority of the time is they're they're trying to get acceptance through social media because most of the time there's probably not someone at home giving them that um uh, at least asking how your day was well, I, I think what how would you have homework today like yeah you know well I mean? you know what i think i think it's uh you know i think it's yes and no you know okay i think it's you know yes because i mean look at look at the way you know times have changed right i mean you know from from back in the day when it was you and i you know like in high school and you know playing sports hanging out and stuff who did we get recognition from you got recognition from and, and we're gonna date i'm gonna date ourselves way back right we got recognition from when we got a a, a page on our beeper oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm not sure what you're talking about right now bro what's a pager dog <laughs> right but hey um, you know what Th that's the recognition that we got like who yeah. was calling us Bravo and who wanted plus. to <laughs> and who wanted to hang out that was our recognition it was who was who was calling us to say like, hey, let's go ride bikes. Let's, we're going to Tony Hernandez's house. We're mm. gonna go hang out out there, or we're gonna go to like Trini's house. Or we're gonna go to Dre's. you know Dre's house. You <laughs> know, that, that, Andre. Right. That hey, that's that's the acceptance from back then, <laughs> right? Because there was no social media, yeah. right? And then as social media grows, right? Like how many friends you have, right? Like it, it, you know, obviously people pay attention to that. Um, now it's now you can build success on social media. So there's, there's also another idea yeah. of like, hey, you know what? My success is rated by how many friends I have because of the way you perceive that, oh, right? Again, right? Like, do, do you know how many friends you have on social media? But that's perception again, though. Perception, right? Yes, because it's still quality over quality. Like, you might have this many, but they're, they might only be following you just because it's the popular thing Do you remember what do. we talked about yesterday? Yeah, yeah. We said, like, you know, like, you get all these places, uh, all these, like, you know, accounts that, that say like buy these th you know thousands of followers oh, buy yeah, them yeah. and we were like why are we going to buy them no, like, because want, that's that's be that's organic. the way we that's the way we think though right but again that that's a market for that because obviously people think that way right mm -hmm. but again if i asked you from the top of your head do you know how many followers you have? I actually don't. I don't see, know. again, see, I, I don't know either, right? Somebody asked me the other day. I think it's over a thousand, but I'm yeah, not. Yeah, so that's kind of cool, right? Like a, exactly. like a round number, right? <laughs> yeah, because you, know. you probably, like, will scroll through it, right? Yeah. But, like, if you know how many followers you have, like, to me, I'm going to judge you, okay? Like, I know I'm not supposed to, like, judge people. But I'm going like, to think, like, how do you know that? Like, why do you know that? Because that's their life. That's what they're that's their life. That's that's what they're paying attention to. Instead, I'm going to I'm going to pay attention to like the one friend that is like, my, you know, the guy that, you know, gives me like, the you know, like, you know, the most love and like the guy that's going to the guy or the girl that's going to like, you know, pay attention and give me a call and say, what's up? What are we doing today? How you doing today? Hey, g hey, good luck on this interview today or good luck on tomorrow. Those are the ones that matter, right? right. But people are not judging things like that anymore. Mm -hmm. So what happens with kids? Yeah. Kids are growing up in this era of what that's more important. The, it's the what did you say yesterday? It, it, it's the quantity, oh, not the quality. Uh, yeah, yeah. When we grew up, it was quality, yeah, oh, not the quantity. There's yeah. a crazy documentary on Netflix about the, about the whole social media. Generation. Oh, the oh, yeah, social, yeah. Dilemma. The social yeah, dilemma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It talks about how you know the kids of the generation, what's going on. It's crazy. That's but crazy. you know what? And it's crazy because you know I know I know for you guys, you guys are on the outside, right? Because I, I work I work in, in, in the inside of the worst of the worst, right? But you know, if I could if I could give you a number, I wish I had stats on this, of how many kids come to us because their parent took their phone away and then became suicidal or they, or they cut themselves. No, no. They cut themselves because they wanted their phone back, but they didn't cut themselves to hurt themselves. They cut themselves to worry their parents so much that they would give them the phone back just so they can get their, you know, just so you can get that attention. Right. Yeah. That is, 
that is mind boggling. Oh, it is. It Imagine is. Imagine when we yes. were younger, if we would have like done some shit like that. Oh yeah. Like what would the response from our parents have been? Oh man. We would have, yeah, we wouldn't have been out for a few days because, like, <laughs> yeah. fuck, you know what I mean? Because yeah. we couldn't walk properly, but, you know, <laughs> no, and that, and that's the thing. Yeah, obviously times have changed and uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's just, I, I, that's the thing, too. And then, I, but then I kind of wonder on that, is it because they don't have enough other hobbies or interests or someone that... Because remember, that was the thing. We always had to be outside. We were playing sports. We were doing something. Oh, we were getting kicked out of the house. Yeah, right? yeah. Get out of the house. Like we were skateboarding, riding our bikes. We used to go yeah. everywhere on bikes and or uh, or uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, sports, uh, being in little league, yep. like what, basketball, I, and we were in all that stuff, bro. And and that's we were busy. That was kind of the maybe the difference. I don't know. And is it because of? And this is this is a whole crazy week because we can go on for days about this shit. But is it because lack of a afforded? I I don't think it's that anymore. I think we were poorer back. Now, I'm being honest because I know like my youngest brother grew up with more things than we did, uh, and that's why no, where right. I'm getting at is our our parents started figuring it out, become becoming more stable. So it's not I don't think a lack of funds, but is it a lack of interest? maybe on the parents part to involve them in something else other than just i know because you know what it is it's easy oh they're busy they're on their phone i don't got to worry about it it's like but you know you know you know I, what it, you know it's crazy to think is that it's different for everybody because we we grew up in in somewhat poverty right mm -hmm. and as years Big went by for and, us, yeah. yeah and uh, you know i mean we all grew up in the same neighborhood yeah. and stuff right and you know we all knew right from wrong you know, we all knew that our parents struggled and, you know, yeah. we wanted the good things and, you know, we, you know, what they, they, they could deal with, you know, they did and what they couldn't, they, they you know, they didn't. Yeah. Um, but it's different for everybody. You know, poverty has certain issues because of poverty, you know, um, you know, the wealthy have certain issues because they're wealthy. You know, it, it, it's 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 perception. It's 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 individualized. Nice. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I have a I have a I have a buddy that has all kinds of money. has more problems than yeah. most people. Oh, have. yeah. Stories. They don't they don't have more problems. Yeah. 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 They don't have also financial problems. Yeah. They're paying all their bills on time and their credit score is great. Yeah. But they're, you know, is kid, kid, kids, are, kids are out of control or, you know, the, the marriage is a mess yeah. or, you know, we all. Again, it, it, every every issue is, is is a little different, and there's a different reason, right? I, I was telling somebody the other day, it's amazing. As life gets easier, right, for certain people, it gets harder because life is easier, right? Mm -hmm. So back in the day, right, we were raised by like, hey, you know what? You're bored, dress outside, right? Yeah. Go do something outside, right? If you're bored, it's because you're a boring person. I remember hearing that and stuff, right? Now it's like... Hey, you know what? Here, get on your phone. You know, you know, work. You know, do, play on your pad. Do whatever, right? Because people don't want. You know, it's too. We're too busy to raise kids. You get what I'm saying? See, that's kind of what I was getting at, and like, uh, you know, that part. Even like, you know, I have a stepson, um, teenager, and most of the time. And and here's the thing too. It's if we've been in a pandemic, so I can't expect too much. He also is. Um, uh, he has asthma symptoms and all that stuff. He's asthmatic. And um, so we can't have him out there when there's fires outside, go play outside. Like there's certain things like, you know, so we do get the give the pass sometimes. But then me, even as just the step parent, I'm like, it's a little too much now. Let's get him off there because I don't want it becomes a dependent thing. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I was what is getting at, too, with the whole social media shit is is um you become dependent on it good or bad almost well i mean not me because i i figured my way out of that like i yeah i'm not i'm only on one social platform right now i used to be on a few um you know i, I found my way to kind of sort of i'm trying to balance still being able to promote yeah but also i like to do shit and not film everything i'm doing every day like some people do that they, yeah. they feel a need that people they think people want to see what they do all day long. And I know I don't want to, I don't give a shit what anybody does all day long, but, um, <laughs> you know, certain things that you put, but that's the difference I think between then and now is that, um, I guess you didn't have the ability 
to go then act out on social media. It, it was one less thing. So like like you said, so when they did tell us, oh, go outside and play or whatever, we couldn't go then on social media and go, oh, my parents are assholes and this and that. Yeah. You just had to deal with it and confront it. Yeah. And you wouldn't have the attention. So whether you did something stupid, hurt yourself, or did, it's like almost, I, I don't want to say it in a mean way, but it's almost like maybe no one would care that's why you didn't do the stupid thing. So now when you're on social media, you know someone's getting, so let me do something stupid, have everybody react, give me the attention I need. It's almost like that gives them one more avenue to make the wrong decision. I don't know. I, well, you know, you know, you hear is, what I'm saying? Is, yeah, you know, and this is what it is, okay? The accessibility that people have to mm -hmm. get different, different views from different people is completely open now, Yeah. right? Yeah. So back then, right? It was only if your you closest did, people. Yeah, it was yes. only the people that actually cared about you. Yes, that thank cared you. About, that cared about you and that that were important in your life. Yes. Now you can get a you can get a comment from someone that you have no idea who they are. Yeah. And that comment will stick with you. And they because you saw it. And they think they know your life just and from that, watching that, your shit. Yeah. That's, that's right. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's a lot like of people that only um, pay attention. Like they'll get a bunch of love, a bunch of like compliments, compliments, right? They don't really, you know, okay, maybe they'll like the comment, won't really say thank you. But is that first negative comment, that's the one they're responding to. The first Again, comment, right? Like, but, but, but like, anyway, you know, but, but why? Why? I mean, why, why do you think, I mean, you know, we were talking about this, the, you know, yesterday also. We were talking about like, you know, in all the, in all the good stuff that we're trying to do, right? Like we're trying to do something good here, mm -hmm. right? You know, we're talking about mental health. We're talking about, you know, like, you know what you know what 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 thing what things need to change or we're just having a normal conversation between two guys right someone is not going to like something that we said right they're going to make a comment right so what what do we do with that comment right so again with with the experience that we have and where from the old school way that we are and stuff right that comment you know we'll take it in con into consideration and we might address it if it, if there's some you know something to address if it's completely ridiculous, we're going to smile about it. We're going to laugh about it. And then oh, we're going to yeah. move on with our life. And then I'm still going to go home and I'm going to continue to live my life. Yeah. Right. But how wait, many wait. people sit I, with a I, comment like that? I have to do this to this one right here. Right. But how many people cannot handle a comment, a negative comment, and it, it, it lets them eat, eat them away? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's crazy. And here's the thing, too, with um, I don't want to uh, one more thing. I just wanted to add on with the whole social media thing is see I have and then maybe this is my bad, too. And then maybe this is something I need to work on. But here's the thing. I have more empathy for people, you know, 20, whatever, more years younger than me a little bit, because maybe there is a situation that maybe they just need to talk to someone right versus like people our age i think here's a lot of the time and i know you guys could all agree on this because you've all seen it and maybe you won't agree but i'm pretty sure you will but um there's a lot of people out there that um they're our age grown no matter we've all been through shit every one of us has been through some shit we some all have difficult, a story the difficult things the hard times losing loved ones everything but some people want to continue or, you know, maybe not attention from one parent, whatever it might be. You grow up in a broken household. So did I. But one thing I'm not going to keep doing is using that as an excuse to either fuck up or feel sorry for myself or be an asshole to and, or be an asshole to people because right. this happened to me. It's like, no, 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 that that's that doesn't solve anything, first of all. And second of all, you're also not being productive to your own life by doing that. But it's like, um um that bro like I, I i don't really have empathy for grown people still complaining about something that happened to them. and maybe that's my bad too right but that's where i don't know because here's the thing we've lost my brother mentioned earlier suicide we've lost a few homies um recently too man and honestly i don't really want to say their names because right. i like of course, out of respect. I, I, yeah out of, out of respect but um it's like I don't know sometimes if it's maybe when they put a comment feeling sorry for themselves, whatever it might have been or not a comment like a post, whatever um, or something like I really cannot decipher the difference 
in if someone's just feeling sorry for themselves and just needs a, uh, all this, you know, let me get some attention real quick. Or they just need one comment positive because they literally are on the verge of. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I feel like sometimes like a couple of people I lost, maybe like maybe I could have reached out a little more. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. You know, maybe I could have reached out a little more. Or or maybe I, you know, could have made a better, like a nicer, doper comment. But it's like, I, I don't know how to decipher the two because, but you also, as, as just a common person following on someone on social media, you can't be a therapist to everybody, obviously. Right. So I just don't know how to decipher who's feeling sorry for themselves and who's on the verge of actually just needs someone to give them some uh, uh, positive, something positive to just last another day and get and deal with it. Yeah. So, and, you know, that's, so, and that's, that's crazy to me, bro. That, and you know what? It's, that that's crazy. Yeah. To for all of us. Yeah. That you know, I, you know, that, again, you know, this is you know, I got twenty years experience in yeah, this, you yeah. know, and that's still crazy to me. Yeah. Because we don't know that. That's that. That isn't something that just you know is a is a like a you know a a uh, plan. There's no there's no there's no designated plan for that. There's no like instruction manual on somebody that is struggling, right? But what do we do as as friends and, and as loved ones and as caring people and like like you and I that try are trying to do something right? Trying to do the right thing. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what? Hey, you know what? I walk I walk down like, you know, we you know, me and my business partner over here, you know, our other business partner cuff him. The goalkeeper. Right? The goalkeeper, right? <laughs> We, you know, when we first started this, we said, hey, let's let's go to, you know, to like the little restaurant. right? Let's go have a drink and let's go talk. Right. And as we're walking over there, you know, we crossed two, three people and stuff. Right. And I always say what's up to everybody that I walk by and stuff. Right. It's just our normal, our normal way of just, you know, the little, the little, the little nod. What's up? Like, you know, the little half smile, whatever it is, just kind of like common you know, courtesy. Right. But. It's some a, it's decency. Like, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's amazing, you know, how something like that can make a difference, yeah. right? Or just like, you know, like me, you know, our, our boys that, you know, that, you know, you know, the, the group chats and stuff like that, like, what's up, everybody, blah, blah, whatever. That makes a huge difference because there's some type of connection of support there, right? But, you know, we can't guess either, like, when somebody is struggling and, and they hide it really well. Mm-hmm. Right. We've all heard that. Right. We all have something going on in our in our, in, our, in our own lives that we don't put out there. Right. So we, we you know, you keep on hearing these, you know, these like, you know, hashtags and, you know, be kind. You know, you don't know what people are going through, but that's legit. Oh, that's legit. We all got shit going on. We all we're all struggling either financially, emotionally. You know, we dealt with like a, having a hard day, a good day, but we all grew up different. So we know how to handle things differently. Yeah. But what about the people that don't know how that didn't have that? Right. The people that come from broken homes, the people that didn't have a father figure, you know, a mother that came in up, it came up in an abusive relationship. And so like now, kind of like going back to what you said, like, you you know, you said, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't know how to deal with this. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of us. We don't know how to deal with somebody that grew up in trauma. Well, we'll see. But but I guess that's what I was getting at is. Me and my brother, some of the categories you just named, we did grow up that yeah, way. Okay. So, yeah. And then so sometimes, but like you're saying is that that's, it's almost the the opposite of what, what you were just talking about is like people have a, a, a great way of hiding it. Mm-hmm. But some people, especially through social media, have a way of the opposite. They want to ev- put every emotion they have out there and want everybody to just, you know, oh, you know what? I went to go get a, you know, it, this is. Okay, I'm going extreme here, but you know, I yeah. I went to go. They didn't have my size. Fuck my life, you know, and <laughs> shit like that. And, FML and I, yeah. FML, and I always hated that. I never used that one, the FML, and I always hated because I, I always tell I always tell people. Now I'm gonna tag that, you every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> people, you no know, people would go somewhere and oh, they ran out of fries. Fuck my life. Like, yeah. do you realize how fucking petty that? Okay, so what I was getting at is that some people have the opposite through social media mainly but of basically expressing every single human emotion inspecting everybody to feel sorry for them or give them attention yeah and not realize in other words sometimes they're just greedy or selfish in the way that they're not understanding not only there's people going through way worse shit than you that might be right next door to you 
but there's people going through the same thing that you are at least. And for you to want to reach out for attention for every emotion you feel throughout the day is just a lot. And that's when you don't know. But then some, how do you know if that, that attention person is the one that uh, they're literally on, they need every day someone to tell them. Hey, trust me. I, I do, I do this, this, this is a daily struggle with us because again, so imagine this, okay? So let me just kind of walk you through a little bit of like the, the way my oh, eight hours uh, eight hours begins I'm sure. and how it ends, right? Yeah. So we we walk into a, a, our acute hospital, right, dealing with you know up to thirty kids, right? On our on an average basis, we have about seven to eight brand new kids on a regular day, and the same amount of discharges, right? So we send kids home on you know on a regular basis, anywhere from from zero to eight and we replace them because there's so there's so many waiting there's there's so many kids Such waiting to say there's a waiting list yeah true yeah. yeah so anyways so as you go these are the stories that you hear right so if i was to tell you this is what i heard this morning okay this morning this is what i got okay you know john doe okay john doe is here because he cut his wrist because he broke up with his girlfriend and he is extremely sad because he was dating her for four months and cannot live with himself because she left, right? That's one story. You move on to the next one, right? John Doe, right? Number two, right? Uh, is here because he's hearing voices. He he hit a vape pen that was laced with something and he's been stuck on his high for seven damn days because he got the wrong shit. Just throwing that out there right now. Where'd you get that, homie? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But man. hey, those are these are the stories we hear, right? These are the yeah, stories yeah. we hear, right? And so, you know, so-and-so stuck on a high seven days, right? Yeah. So you move on to the next one, right? Parents divorce. Par you know, child is, is severely depressed because he's in between two parents fighting. You know that's legit, right? Right oh, off the yeah. top of your head and stuff, right? That's like, that's a true story, right? And then you kind of like, the, you, you yourself as an individual. Now, I can't talk for you. I can't talk for my, the rest of my nursing staff. I can't talk for the floor staff. But we all get a different idea of, of what we're hearing. So you guys are hearing this stories, right? Like you just heard three different stories. Which ones are your, which ones are worse? Which one do you think might be fake? Which one do you think is you're gonna take have more compassion for? Now I'll tell you another story that there's a there's a, a six foot two um, six foot two male, uh, 14 years old, no history of any type of like mental illness, just assaulted you know three kids at a high school, went to the ER. Uh, punched a female nurse in the in the face is spitting at the cops comes into comes into our hospital and said whoever comes close to him he's gonna kill him and he's ha he has a brush in his hand with you know cut off and it's shaved like so that's the stuff that we hear every day and so you think like hey all right who am I gonna be compassionate with compassionate with who am I gonna take serious who am I gonna you know like you know, spend extra time with that. That's the stuff that you deal with kind of like on the outside, right? On the outside, you hear different stories, but then you got to be in the middle. You got to be like that, you know, that, that I, neutral I, area. I get your point. And it's like, yeah, it's like there's sometimes there, you feel the sense of urgency. Hey, and can I ask you real quick? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, how, how, um, how has it changed in your, in your profession, uh, since the pandemic started? Cause I can imagine it getting worse with people like out of work or, um, or especially just kids is mostly you work with, right? So, yeah. so they're, they're they're not going to school anymore. So they might be having to be stuck home with like some of the abusive parents. parents, parents yeah. Parents oh, it's a, it's so across it's they, across the board. Yeah. They need to go to school. They want to go to school to get out of that. You know. Yeah. It's, it it it, it, it is amazing because yeah, the, I mean the pandemic has has really like increased the the different amount of 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 children, teenagers, youth that are struggling, right? Um, and it, and it's, it's, you know, it's a, di it's a different, you know, it's a variety of issues. It could be anywhere from the, the child that needed the one-on-one -on -one attention in class from the teacher that needed that structure that all of a sudden they're at home and the parent needs to help them with it. The oh, have you, parent. I'm just going to say, okay. So like, I remember trying to help my son and my daughter with math and I was like, fuck is this? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know this. And they were like in seventh grade. And I was like, what? what I, I can't help you with this. And I was calling, uh, you know who I was calling? I was calling, I was calling Billy Fant. Oh, and I was like, shit. I'm a, I'm a babe. 
call Bill. Bill will help you out with math, you know? I would call Bill Baca. Yeah. yeah just call the Bills. No, that but, but that, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that, need help, call the Bills. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got two of them in our crew. Yeah, yeah. But, we, we got uh, all the Bills. But, you know, it, it's issues like that. It's kind of like the what you just or what you just said that it's you know uh, kids that are coming from homes that are already already struggling, kids that come home that that are home now in an abusive household, right? Um, financially unstable. I mean, you got to think, right? Like we were sending our kids to school. They get breakfast there. They get lunch right. there. You get a kid at home all day long. That's not just breakfast and lunch. That's snacks. That's drinks. Oh, yeah. That, they're going and, back and forth to the yeah, food. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know when I'm home all day long, I get bored and I'm like, oh, let me go check. I'm not even hungry and I'm opening yeah, it there. The and I'm just opening the, I just, I'm opening the fridge. Even for though you already know what's in there. Yeah. 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 Like, I want to see if something changed. Like, yeah. I usually yeah. always find the beer when I open it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. First thing I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hey, no, but this is a cool conversation, man. It's just, you know, again, things that need to be kind of talked about and i guess um you know my point being is um i kind of feel like through a maturity level that you know i guess that's why i feel more empathy for 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 the young youngsters and kids that emotionally or mentally they might not have been through the things to prepare them for what they're actually going through but as yeah. we get older especially like close to our age i, I just kind of lose a little bit of the empathy for some I, I almost feel like then it gets to the point of uh, now you're just feeling sorry for yourself you had plenty of time to get over whatever have any be a grown man go get a job you know and, and then still and i might be a little bit cruel the way i i put it but that that's the way I feel, and that. So, no, I, I so, think, I but think I, you, I think you, uh -huh. along with so many others, yeah. feel exactly the well, same way. no, but that's why I commend you. You know, you actually do work with the youth yeah. that might just need that extra, but they might just need someone to talk. But to. you know what? It, it it is amazing because you know what I you know I, we bring we bring kids into the office all the time, and you know I'm mm -hmm. I'm pretty straight out at, at at my job, and there's kids that you know you had to have, you know, like overwhelming compassion because of the stuff that they went through mm -hmm. and because it's 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 you could tell it's legit and you could yeah. you could almost uh you could almost uh like uh, what's the word i'm looking for you could almost like like call home verify it you know so it's kind of like you could see that it's real right and then there's other kids that you could see what it is you could see that it's just behavior that there yeah. is no that there is no mental illness it's behavioral. Sometimes it's, it's just a spoiled it's brat. Just you know? a, just, <laughs> it's just some entitlement. Yeah it's, yeah. it's, you know, like, you know, you got everything that you wanted and now you're mad because you're not getting what you want. Because now, now you did something wrong and they took your and favorite you toy caught. or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it, it's that that assessment process of what we do on a regular basis. Mm. It's not easy. You know, again, um, I guess we could never um, get to solving things creating solutions um finding better methods until things are talked about obviously it has to be made aware of and part of like what's again bringing awareness with your clothing line and sparking the conversation um i i feel like um and see i don't know as many people in the field as you do but i feel like they're there needs to be obviously see i i do it in a way sort of with with what we do here, like I am here when like I, I always have youngsters that are in like they want to become artists and different things yeah. asking me questions. So I feel like from a mentorship standpoint, I can kind of fill a little void that sometimes people might the kids might just be looking for that, whatever. So I kind of like feel like I do my little part there, but I'm not a, in the profession. So speaking in the profession, um, do you think? Um, because I feel like there should be more people and maybe I just don't see it cause I'm not in your profession, yeah, yeah. but more people that put it out there to that. They're ready to have the conversation or even just be there when someone needs them. Do you, what do you feel on that? Yeah. I mean, do you think there needs to be more or is there something I'm missing? Like, no, no. I mean, you know what the, the, I mean, you know, 
cliche, but yeah, yeah, the more the more the more the merrier. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, obviously, you know, especially the, the, for a cause like this. Yeah, yeah, for you know the 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 more the more resources are out there, mm -hmm. the more options. I mean, however you want to see it, you know, like obviously, you know, the the more that's out there, you know, it, it's more accessible to people. You know, um, with 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 this type of criteria of like you know people that are hurting that people that are lost people that are that are searching for something looking for an answer you know it, it hits in different ways you know what i mean like what works for you might not work for me what works for me not might, might not work for you you know so by different by having different avenues different options it helps all of us so you know same way you know same way for you guys with, with music right what's worked for you has has worked for you right what ha what what works for a different artist you know that you know gives them a different avenue has worked for that artist right so it's the exact same thing well i think on on that uh note of what you're saying is like i i hear you because like say for example i'm not like overly sensitive but i know i always responded better to like the positive reinforcement growing up like coaches and different things yeah. versus I would just get more pissed when the coaches kind of beat me down instead yeah, of telling yeah. me, okay, yeah, tell me what I did wrong, but like, tell me to, how to fix it. Don't just, don't just sit there and ridicule me the whole time, you know, and that, but that works for some people. Cause I know that some people get motivated by that. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes I, I would like in different sports, little league, and I would, I would perform better, but it was in a, a, a mad way. Mm -hmm. and so that didn't work in the long run for me so i had to figure out but i hear what you're saying so if if even the youth have more people um that are involved and willing to lend that conversation and i mainly speak to the youth but everybody um that might be feeling you know emotions or or some type of a way where they feel like they want to hurt someone or them or themselves um i feel like yeah exactly the the more people they have to talk to because one person's uh talk to them might not kick in as much as somebody might relate to them more that might right. kick in yeah them. yeah somebody might say something that sparks their intellect a little more like yeah, somebody see, somebody might challenge them a little more right yeah yeah and, and so what, what we have to do as you know as a group that's you know attempting to try to help people we have to understand that piece, right? So, you know, I have this conversation with parents all the time because their par par I get parents that will talk to me about like, oh, yeah, you know, my child doesn't listen to me. And I tell them, I, I, you know, I give them advice and I do this and I do that. But, you know, their friend could give them the exact same advice yeah, and they'll yeah. listen to them. I'm all like, yeah, that's fine. That's okay. As long as they take the, the yes, yeah, yes. like yeah, you know, it's it's the same goal. Mm -hmm. You know, different avenue, same end result. You're you're trying to achieve. That that's yeah. right. It's the same goal. We still want this person to you know to achieve, you know, the goal of like living life, like you know, like to be safe, to to uh, move forward, you healthy, know, like, mentally. You know, yeah, like yeah. all of this stuff, right? But it is. It's different avenues, right? So, you know, for for you probably, I mean, I'm sure you do know this and stuff, right? But maybe we don't talk about it enough, right? Like music, like for, for you guys, right? You're bringing creative artists in here all the time. You have people that have goals that, you know, probably have uh, or could have different backgrounds, right? Um, you know, their own struggles. And music is our outlet. Yeah. And because you did this, because you have the B side show, it gives them that outlet. You know, it, it's a it's a form of them expressing themselves and allowing that that little that the thirty minute time that that one hour frame whatever it is for them to be themselves, express themselves, and release that anxiety whatever it is, it helps them. So that is that's hey, just another avenue. A hey, great great point. Because I've heard it said before, even you know, known our uh, M and M said a bit like it's like it it it's a form of therapy. Yeah. Some people we can't afford, um, you know, therapists in the hood, so we 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 can go into studio. Sometimes you know, uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's a you know the drinks, whatever it might be to uh, be therapy to yourself. But here's the thing: I I just wanted to add to that is I'm one of the people that. You know, and I'm not saying 
again, that I'm not a bad person. Like I, I've always been a decent person when I help people, but I was kind of going down a wrong path for a little while. And when I got really deep into the into music and be, I was just in studios all the time. That kept me from being somewhere else where I might have done something yeah, that I yeah. probably shouldn't have done. So, and, that, and you yeah. know, and, that, and and that's okay. That's, that's being normal. productive. Yes. Yeah, and I, that and you know what I mean. I mean, what what's a better story than than the person that has fallen down, has have struggled, and has like somehow made it out of there, and and now is is helping other people that have struggled, right? Mm -hmm. We all have therapy in, in different ways, right? I don't want to knock any type of therapy whatsoever, yeah. right? I think therapy is great. I talk to a therapist, mm -hmm. right? Now, she's like, I I consider her like my sister because she's not like my therapist, but she's a therapist at the place I work with. But me and her have like uh created a bond together i call her my sister and so like we we check in every once in a while and she'd be like hey hey bro are you cool and i'm like bam unload right and you know at the end of it it's cool it's like a it, you know it's it's a weird way of like a cleanse right and then other days um i'm hitting the gym with my boy manuel like and we're working out and that's therapy other days i'm hitting the river and i'm with my compa dre Right. I, I, I'm with the people that I love, people that I'm comfortable with. It's people. therapy to bag on Dre. Yeah, like, it's therapy. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it is. But all these different forms of out, your outlets and stuff like music, like vacation, like working out, which talking to a therapist, talk, you know, we are we all like get have like the, all the, the all these options are out there for you. Hey, see, and then anybody, you know, listening, especially maybe younger, whatever, anybody going through anything um, that happens to stumble upon this, please take note of what he just said. There's just so many outlets. Find something, a creative outlet. Even find, read a book. Uh, read yeah. a book. Find somebody to listen. Just have a quick conversation. Just like he said, it, it doesn't have to be all in put your all your eggs in one basket when it comes to that. Just take it a little bit at a time talk to someone one day like he said work out one day just let you you know get you know let your uh you know emotions out on a punching bag whatever it might be create but something. Uh, create something read a book write a book all these things are available like he said and i just want to encourage that for anybody that is listening there's so many ways try a few of these and see if it is what what works for you and that's what that's all we want you know? how does it like is it, it affect you um like when you get home after work, like from what you, you know, see what during I, the day? You know, a, I was going to ask shade. to be honest with so. you, like it took me years to to adjust. Right. You know, and, and again, I, I think it has to do a lot to uh, it has a lot to do with the way we were raised. Right. You know, we 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 were raised in a very diverse community. Yeah. We 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 moved around a lot. I, I heard I heard you talking about, you know, uh, a couple of days ago when you did your show of how you moved to different locations. All but right. that also helped you like adjust to different environments, sure. different people, different, different life, situations, races, different everything. lifestyles, yeah. right? But that that's like a get. I mean, it's crazy to think that like you're like, oh man, yeah. instability. No, nah. no one think it would think instability and take it as a positive. Right, but you have right. to. Yeah. But it is right. Yeah. So you you gain something from that. Yeah. You gain how to deal with different environments, different people, mm -hmm. different situations, struggles, the easy life, the hard life, the you know, whatever whatever it is, right? You we learned that, right? But going back to what you were asking me, you know, it took me years. It took me years because you I know what? Imagine, when I when right? when I first started in the psych field, right? It it was kind of like the beginning of of me understanding or me or I should say me first hearing all these horrific stories about kids. And it was at the time that I had just had my daughter, right? And so now I'm, I'm, at, I'm at work hearing about girls that are getting prostituted, uh, girls that have sex been- Sex trafficking, Sex all that traffic, shit, yeah. trafficking, rape, molested, yeah. kid, uh, little girls that had tried to commit suicide. Incest, all this, all that shit. I mean, the worst stories possible, and as a as a brand new father to a to like, a daughter, no less. Bro. Yeah, to a daughter, I was going yeah, home. Fuck. All these stories in my head, and I'm like, fuck, like how yeah. you know what what? How do I protect her from all this, right? So yeah, so thank you because I have a yeah soon to be four year old, and I think about these things every day. And oh yeah, like, yeah, you know, I mean it. It you know, I mean it's impossible 
to like not think about those things, right? But again, right? So as time went on, right? You learn how to adjust to that, right? So as time went on, I learned how to be, you know, and you know, I'm, I'm not sitting here, you know, kind of like tapping myself on the back kind of deal and stuff, right? But you have to learn to not lose compassion, to be strong enough to deal with like the worst of the worst, right? Do your job appropriately and come home and be a father, right? So how, how difficult is that? And you know what? I'm going to give a, I'm going to give a shout out to like, like some people that do this on a regular basis, you know, like there's thousands of people that we on the outside don't know what they do. You know, police officers, firefighters, you know, like, uh, you know, like the, your, your, your regular guy that has a stressful day at work and has to come home and still be a, be, be a dad and be a, a husband, a boyfriend, all this stuff. Right. We don't know what they, these guys go through. Right. We just see the outside of it and stuff. Right. But when you go home and then you got to do your job. Right. It's difficult. Right. So how do you how do you yeah. how do you control that piece? Yeah, it's easy for people on the outside to see it, you know, that's a that's a something. or it's easy to outside people to comment on that. I was telling I was having a conversation with with a family friend. OK, and these are the best conversations always. Right. Holidays. Right. Oh, yeah. You know, oh. politics. Oh, reli man. Religion. I always tell them don't come to my house. with. Oh, no, no. But, you know, I never get into these conversations, but this one just kind of happened. I just kind of like, eh. You know, kind of hit me on the side a little bit, you and know. They 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 they, egg, they egged you on. They got yeah. you in. They yeah. brought you into the con yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was a conversation about you know again, you know, and and again, this is probably a little off subject, right? But like police brutality and what you know police do and the Black Lives Matter stuff and like you know like mental health stuff. It was all kind of combined in one conversation, and so the, the this this family member, you know, which I love to death, right, had said like. You know what? That's not right. This is what it should be. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, let me ask you a question. Amal, um, uh, you ever been in that situation? You ever been assaulted? Have you ever been in a position of where you had to like put your hands on somebody? And that's a, that individual said, no. So yeah. then how can you comment on that? Yeah. Because what you see, and I'm um, uh, let me let me tell you something, okay? On a regular basis, Unfortunately, we have to put our hands on people, right? We have individuals that are, you know, six foot plus, two, three hundred pounds plus, psychotic, uh, you know, drug addiction, psychotic because of delusions, schizophrenia, that want to hurt you, kill you. And you have to understand on the other side, right? So like Shay, like for you, right? So imagine on, the, on what you see, Kim. Hey, Shay, I'm going to kill you. Because I don't like your glasses. Your glasses remind me of my dad that abused me, right? If I see you, I'm going to take this pencil, I'm going to stab you. So now you, as a professional, you got to protect yourself. You also have to protect that patient. And you got to be able to understand that this is a this is an individual that's sick. What that is not. Take glasses off. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, 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 that might work. That might work, right? But I'm saying is, how does that, how does that individual, how do you stay in control? Yeah. To be able to be able to, to deal with somebody that's aggressive, assaultive, wants to kill you. But do you also have to understand that this is the individual is sick, that yeah. they're not they're not sane. See, and then to go on to that point, which this could be a whole nother topic, which we'll, I, I don't want to go too far into that because we'll get off. But I think that's uh, sort of what's missing is that approach to it as far as a lot of the things that are going on, you know, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, perpetuated by media. I get that. Yeah, of course. But, but, um, you know, a lot of that, uh, I think that approach doesn't get taken into consideration enough sometimes with who they're dealing with when they need to apprehend somebody. Yeah. So, um, so I was, I was teaching a bunch of new nurses, you know, like a, we, were, we were doing a, a training and I happened to take them to like the most acute unit, right? Which is an adult unit. We have patients that are like severely mentally ill, schizophrenic patients that are actively psychotic, suicidal, homicidal, uh, and then a bunch of like behavioral issues, right? So as we were walking through, we were talking about the risk, um, how we assess risk, right? And this is something that gets taught, you know, in, in our classes, but is not taught enough in, in, in the outer community, right? So as we were walking through, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 
there was a patient and you could tell he was talking to himself. He was he was responding to some type of internal stimuli. You know, we picked that up right away and stuff, right? And uh one of the one of the new nursing staff had said like, Oh, like, are we safe right here? And I'm like, Yeah, we're doing okay, you know, like, you know, just felt some 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 caution, right? He's he's obviously, you know, responding to something, right? You know, so obviously we're gonna just kinda be cautious, right? So he picked up a chair and threw it. Right. So immediately we had, you know, a lot of people kind of just completely like kind of backed off. Like, you know, what happens to you in the minute there's like some type of uh, like, you know, somebody showing some type of like dangerous like type of behavior. You know, this, per this person just threw a chair. These are wooden chairs. He picked up a chair and chucked it. And then the, the, the staff member that was uh, the new nurse that was next to me had said, like, why, had, why didn't anybody jump on him? And I was like. Where do you throw the chair? And he was just like, down the hallway. I'm like, who's in the hallway? And he was just like, he's <laughs> nobody, like, nobody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, so how do you ri how, how do you uh, assess that risk? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, but but that was like an aggressive act. And I was like, you've never thrown anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you've yeah. never like got <laughs> frustrated and like like smack something off like your desk? And he was like, yeah, but they're in the psych ward. I'm like, you're in the psych ward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so I was clowning him Thank a little you, bit. But good point. But your I was point, trying to I was well trying, taken. Yeah, I was trying to get him to understand that. If you I have was to, your trainee, I would have understood exactly yeah, what so, I and, got you. Yeah, and so yeah. some people got it, some people didn't. Yeah. Some of my nursing staff kind of backed away completely because they got scared, you know, they had never been there. But they were like and what but he was really intrigued by the by what, the way I was responding. And he was, you know, like he was responding and he was like, Oh, I get it. Nobody there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm on like, now. Like, let's say, let's change that a little bit, right? Let's say he has a conversation with the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you know, you got to stay here for a couple more days. He picks up the chair and throws it at him. That's legit. That's, that's, a, that's an assaultive, that's assaultive behavior with the, with the, with the attempt to, to make, do damage. Come on. Then we're, then we're restraining him. Then we're doing whatever we have to do to kind of make sure that nobody gets hurt. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I'm a, but I'm a. I might address that guy and say like, "Hey, like you, you okay?" A, a simple check-in. He might be like, "Oh, dude, I'm fucking pissed," and then be like, "All right, dude, you want to talk?" Yeah, don't you <laughs> met people that have punched walls just yeah, like when they yeah. With their own hand for no reason. But again, you know, again, this is kind of some of the things that we don't we don't teach out there that need to be taught more. The 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 risk, the assessment of risk and its responses, right? So again, we see it on TV all the time. We see the response of, of of certain individuals, what they do to certain to other individuals because of what what's happening, right? And we always think like, hey, you know what? Was that appropriate? Why have you been there? Yeah. You know, how are you gonna respond? You know, when somebody throws a chair right at you, you know, how are you gonna respond when someone has a pencil in their hand? How are you gonna respond when somebody's just hearing voices and can't control that? Like this is an assessment process, you know. Yeah. And that that's again what I was getting at. I think that aspect of it needs to be incorporated in any training dealing with some you know I, I mean i'm sure it is already i'm just i just mean a little more of understanding that every individual has different circumstances well i tell you you know me mental mental illness is something very yeah. very uh interesting and scary also yeah. right but there's not enough knowledge out there so people don't understand it mm -hmm. you know like i mean i i feel bad for the people that have to deal with this that don't have any understanding any of understanding or experience of dealing yeah. with someone like that yeah that's that's, that's i mean crazy. we have people that we work with that still can't understand it and yeah. we're like you know we're trying to teach them yeah how to deal with these individuals yeah. and try to again compassionate enough to deal with it strong enough to deal with it but also stay and, safe and, and keep the patient safe and here's the other thing is like and then sometimes it boils down to um with emotions and all the things going on in it sometimes it's like maybe this isn't your field oh, like yeah. because the way you you know even the way you're speaking on it like you've learned to handle and and adjust and assess and that's why like you know and some people just maybe this ain't your field bro you you can't assess you everything you you know you react uh 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 what, what is the word uh um uh, uh trying to look for but uh vi not viciously but uh well, impulsively aggressively or impulsively yeah um 
you know, versus thinking, like you said, take a step step back and wait, where did he throw that? Oh. Or what is his conditions? Yeah. Like, think of all these things. We had, I tell you, we, we, I mean, I, I mean, I wish I could bring you guys in, in into the place I work with because, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the manager of our art department and I'll deal with like new staff members that don't have that experience yet. And I'll catch them arguing with like an individual that's in a, in a, in an unstable place, either psychotic or you know like you know in a manic episode through like you know their diagnosis and stuff right and then i'll sit there and i'm like are you arguing with the patient and be like do you understand they're not stable you know and i kind of i kind of have my own way of being real sarcastic i I was gonna say by by you're implying that you realize you're putting yourself in the same place yeah like i'm like i'm trying to like get them to you know and i you know and again you know maybe not the best methods right but like I'll tell people, like I understand like, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, do you? Yeah, I can't tell who needs help right now. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and I mean, but that's the way. That's uh, the reality that's, of it. He said the Lakers suck. Yeah, the, <laughs> no, that that's the that's the I guess the point I was getting at is we, uh, your perspective is everything, and and the way you uh, address things. Um, I wish we could have again. It boils down to training a lot. Yeah. And yeah, and sometimes there's not resources for the amount of training needed and and stuff, but it's good to hear your perspective on that and on dealing with it and not just being impulsive and reactive and yeah, yeah. understanding the individual. Hey, uh so you know, my brother also wanted to know. We talked about it, you know. Oh yeah, we, I mean, we know but like uh just let people know like how how did you first get into it? Like you know, not everybody Oh man, that you know that you know that and, and that is hilarious because we spoke about this once before. So, I mean, we can go back, I mean, Man, I, I think I think it's over thirty years. Yeah. Uh, we Even were, though we're twenty-one, yeah, both of us. True, true. I mean, both of us. Hey, we look okay. Yeah, right? yeah. We're all we're um, not bad. But I think about a year after high school, I think I think we were all there. We were all hanging out in one of our one of our buddies' garage, and we were all hanging out and having beers, kind of like exactly what we're doing now, just shooting the shit, just hanging out. And uh, one of one of our buddies' uh, mom was the actual supervisor at the hospital that I worked at. And Not she... Yeah, hey, shout out Chino John. Yeah, no, that's no, right. Yeah. And I can say that because he's one of our boys from way back. <laughs> so she came into the... She came into the... I don't remember if we were in the garage or in the living room. Because we were always at their spot. Yeah, that, that was the spot. That well, was... and, and here's why. Just a quick backstory. I'm not going to go to... Uh, let him get back to the story. But it's because she worked in that field... And she worked a lot. So we were always at his house because there was yeah, never any worked, parents there. She worked 12-hour shifts, 16-hour no shifts. Yeah. So that was our hangout. Yeah. But she showed up one day, and there was probably like 15 of us hanging out. She was cool as fuck, Yeah, too, she was. Dude. Yeah. And uh, she walked in and said, hey, any of you guys want a job? And a, a bunch of us were just kind of hanging out, doing our thing, you know? And uh, we, we had asked, like, well, doing what? And again... Don't don't judge this, but this is way way back in the day. Times were different back then. But she had said, "Well, I basically, need a couple guys to slam the slam the shit out of patients and hold them down and and help us stay safe so we can give them medication." And I was like, "Whoa, like that sounds intense." And like about five, four or five of us said, "Hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's go." The bigger the 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 bigger guys out of the out of the community. yeah. <laughs> said, so hey, we were like. <laughs> But again, you know, times have changed now. This is, you know, this is it. This is a long, long, long time ago, you know. Um, but it was, you know, it was, you know, it was raw back then, you know. Back yeah. back in the day, you know, things, you know, things were different. So, you know, don't take that, you know, too too bad. Don't yeah. run don't run with that. Oh, uh, no, no. Uh, but, you know what I mean? That was that was back in the day things were different. Well, also consider she was talking to some teenagers. Yeah, yeah. So we were like we were pumped. We're like, yeah, yeah we can go slam the shit out of some 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 dudes or some people. And you know, we we didn't understand it. We didn't know what mental health was. We didn't had no idea. We've never even heard of a psych unit before, you know? Um we probably heard of like, you know, you know, one flew over the cuckoo's nest back in, back in the day, you know, because of high school and what we had to read. But we didn't really know much about it and stuff. Classic movie, so, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. and, yeah. and so, um, you know, a few of us went in and we became mental health workers and some of us stuck it out and stuff, you know. And and to this day, including Chino John, which was, his, you know, uh, her, her son, 
His brother, both too. Sons. Right? His brother, Oh, Alan that's too, right. right. Alan, Alan, too. They both became NPs, right? Alan. Yeah. Right? They both became NPs. Um, my compadre Andres, he, he's also in, in, in the psych field. Renee, Renee became Art, too, right? Yeah, Art also. Yeah. Myself. There's a there's, oh, a, there's a bunch of us. Renee, yeah. Chet. So I mean, like you know what? We went in there like you know little youngsters, thinking that we were just gonna slam the shit out of patients, and and then we became probably some of the biggest patient advocates. Yeah, that are probably out there. And that's kind of what, you know, and, and I wanted to flip back because the way you said you want, you know, uh, everybody wants to be politically correct now, but this is how you got into it. But what became as you guys uh, transitioned into actually, like you said, advocates versus yeah. versus looking at it like, oh, this guy's out of control. I just got like now you guys understand like you get and that's the whole shit, man. You guys went through this journey and it and it wasn't. um it, it was for a reason, like it, instead of just like, OK, yeah, I'm, I just go to work and, you know, I. Yeah. Well, trust me, when we first got into it, we probably got into it because we were thinking, oh, we're going to go slam the shit out of some people. Yeah, it, that's what I was. Yeah. You know what? You know, I mean, that's the that's I mean, I we're not going to bullshit this. Doing it. We're not going to bullshit this. Right. And then eventually it was like, oh, shit, like there's money involved here. Oh, yeah. We're going to get paid for this shit, too. Like, yeah, that's great, too. Right. But as we got older and we became more educated and trained, right, then, you know, we learned the compassion. We learned, you know, we learned what it was about. We learned that there was like, you know, that there was more attention needed here. Yes. And so now, yeah. now, again, myself, Art, Renee, uh, John, Alan, I mean, so many of us, right? We're I, we're proud I, of I've even what seen, we're doing. I've seen my my, my carnal duty, man. Um, I've seen like his I impulses or response or attitude change, like you said. And it, a lot of it's education, um, um, of course, experience. Yeah. But I just I, I just want to key in on what you're saying, man. It's it's always important to keep training and educating ourselves on whatever field we're in and especially when it's so important as what you're doing you know law enforcement firefighters you know these first responders and things training is just so important to just keep up with you know everything to educate yourself so thank you for this conversation man and you know what i i just want to get into um you know you talked about the homies we have plenty of good times there too um any favorite memories because i know some of them will check this out dre might be the only one that's gonna watch it naked but or 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 listen. maybe 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 renee also yeah yeah maybe oh, renee yeah. too yeah. he's yeah. always naked I have a, yeah. <laughs> you know what you're right i think dre's a little more open about it i think renee might be naked <laughs> listening to this but but um you know any favorite stories or anything with uh, the homies uh, man. man you know what uh i mean there's there's probably there's probably one too many to talk about but you know oh, that'll one be another of, episode too one, one yeah. of my one of my favorite stories has always been rose bowl rose bowl was awesome uh, awesome do you remember rose bowl we we went out to uh to Colorado Boulevard during, oh, during oh that one. yeah uh, yeah I, was, I, I think I it was New it was New oh, Year's you know Eve what? probably New right Eve, yeah New Year's and this is all allegedly okay allegedly <laughs> allegedly and this was because this is before we grew up yeah oh you know, yeah this is you know disclaimer yeah oh God. yeah see I at first I didn't know where he was then when I I remember yeah now. Now you know I what I yeah. mean we were you know we were we were we were young yeah, we were young but I think a bunch of us went out there. This is what I heard. Yeah. This is what I heard. I mean, I think I think this is what happened. I think <laughs> my memory's a little. Yeah, uh, I think I don't. I, don't, I wasn't there. Marijuana. I just heard this. Yeah. Okay? Memory. But uh, the same group, which are we're still all tight now. You know, we're all tight still. Thir thirty thirty years ago, probably or so. Twenty thirty. Um, we went to, uh, to we went to uh, Colorado Boulevard for mm -hmm. New Year's New Year's at, Eve. At the time, the homie had moved. He was renting a spot right like down the a street. block away. Perfect block yeah. away. Yeah, we went we went down there having a great old time, and uh, uh, another group of, of fellas probably got a little frit got a little, got a little feisty with us. Yeah, and it it kind of really proved 
how tight this group was. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll leave it at that. That was a. Hey, but we, I think we ended up doing all right that day. Oh, okay. I, w- I was going to say that part. And allegedly, we did all right that yeah, day. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah, shout out no. to all the homies, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, all them homies, are, I know they're going to listen to this episode. Um, hopefully, most of them are at the grand opening and stuff. Um, and you know what? And here's the other thing. I'd be pushing their buttons on this shit, too. You know, as long as any of us are still communicating and still pushing and trying to do more, all of us need to be involved in that and yeah. pu- helping push it further, man. Yeah. It, you know what? We talked about this yesterday. Yeah. We said, hey, you know what? We get to a certain point in our life where it is it is it is a a a a, a big difference of like how it feels to be able to help somebody else. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And and that and that's what I'm you know, and any of my homies open a business and it's I'm I'm. I don't have to really talk. I've done it. Like I, I'm there. I support. Yeah. I buy shit. I, I listen. Whatever they're doing, like I'm, I'm one of the ones. And so, I'm. I can talk about that. Motherfucker, hey, hey, support hey, your homies. Quick memory. Uh, my favorite memory. One of the, with you actually was that so many years ago. But I know that's one of your spots now is Havasu. But remember when we had the houseboat? Oh but, man, but that, oh, that was you, that was the way like kind of inspired you because you got a boat after that and you're there all the time. Yeah, the that's shit, right, that's boat. right. Was yeah. that the time we fucked up? Uh, we uh, sorry again, but we called the homie. His name was we. His nickname was Saddam. Oh, that, yeah, he was the one. That, was that yeah. the one we the fucked up? He lost his, his deposit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, remember? Uh, hey, that was when we were broke hey, and that five hundred dollar deposit the, the was like a lot. Was fucked up and then they had to make a switch boats. Oh, switch boats in the middle of the thing. Yeah. Let me tell you why though let me tell you why the uh, we didn't one, pull up the anchor the two there was oh, two right. engines on the back uh two motors and someone didn't pull up one of the side and everybody had a job that motherfucker didn't come to do his yeah. job whoever that side was but um didn't pull up the anchor and it got caught up in the propeller and right. fucked right. up the whole motor oh, right. so we hey, tra- now we n- traded it in so for one that had a, a septic, septic tank yeah, that's what overflow was. Yeah. Smell like shit. Yeah. Okay, sorry. What were we gonna say? Yeah, no, no. I, you know what? I, I clearly remember that story. But you know what? Before we finish, I do wanna, you know, I do wanna say, you know, since I got yeah, you guys here, uh, you know, I do wanna say thank you guys. You know, yeah. like th- this partnership and um, and this new venture that that we're taking. You know, I think it's huge for us and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, I'm. I'm more than grateful to to be able to kind of link up with the, you know a couple guys that you know want to do the right thing yeah. and you know are you know are bringing out the creative side of so many so many people and somehow mental health music apparel creativity all kind of comes together because it gives people an out uh, a, 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 an out an out outlet to whatever whatever's going on in their life and stuff so yeah. thank you guys again and stuff you know for giving us this opportunity. And, you know, ho- hopefully we're going to do something big, you know. And you know what? I think so. It, it, it might be one. It might be a million. Well, whoever. But we might make a difference in one person's life. And if we do that, then th- that's huge. Yeah, well worth it. Yeah, well For worth it. For me, too. For me, too. And, I, and that's, again, where I had a hard time originally trying to get involved in anything. Like, we do community work now. We do fundraisers. We do, like, food, you know, drives and shit to help. But I never understood the concept of what can I do to make a yeah, difference. But it's yeah. all it takes is you change one per. You might bring this person, then he's helping you now. Now you got two people. Now you might have reached five people, and that's uh, is all it takes is that spark. So yeah, thank you, man. Hey, real quick before we head out, I have one question. Are we still good, Che, over there? Yeah. Okay, one quick. My, I mean, not a question. Um, one of my favorite memories, even though it was me that had to be in jail for it, is when we, <laughs> the time uh, safari bar, and I'm dating mm. myself there to anybody. The, go- that, the golf cart. Anybody that's yeah. in the SGV area knows that that <laughs> where BJ's is now at the Eastland Center Mall used to be a uh, safari bar, and uh, we used to frequent that right spot. Right there, yep. right the yeah, right, right the down the street. street. But we used to frequent that spot, and one day we got a little faded. The homegirls we went with, they were supposed to give us a ride. I think they got, uh, like, we knew these homegirls good, and I think probably they found some other pito or something. I don't remember <laughs> exactly. But, uh, see, I'm being not you meant numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey. I mean, they got a number. But um, so we were clowning around, and so my other homie calls his chick at the time. 
to come pick us up and we went to go take a leak where we could and there was a uh, one of them security golf carts and they had left the keys in it and apparently because i found out years later that the security guard somebody knew him and he was asleep he fell asleep but he left the keys in the shit and <laughs> we got in there just a clown we had a good time we like we always do and i started driving around the parking lot the homies jumped on the back next thing you know i go i kept going i drove out of the parking lot and we drove home we drove from west covina to well it's another covina to west covina yeah covina to west covina on a golf cart that had a little siren on it and a horn and we drove on the streets all the it was the one of the funnest things i've ever done to this date yeah except for i had to spend a few days in jail so well yeah, yeah no you're missing out the best part oh the best part tell the them, best Roman, part the best you lived part at that oh, path. yeah the best part is that we made I, it there yeah you guys made it there all the way there and then this is the bright idea yeah let's take the golf cart back a block and a half away to, to go pick up store. more beer mm-hmm. and got caught <laughs> <laughs> and, look, and, cut. <laughs> and listen and here's the worst part about even that is we went to go get more beer after two o'clock when they wouldn't sell it to us anymore <laughs> but we had such a good yeah. time on the golf cart and the other twist is one of the guys that rode with us the whole time on the golf cart decided to stay when we got to the crib when we went to go get more beer on it another guy went and he had to go to jail with us he, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't even get the fun part <laughs> He literally drove like 40 feet, and the next thing you know, there was literally a fucking, what, about five, six cop cars yeah, yeah, yeah. all waiting. And it was one of those situations. And usually, uh, and one of the reasons they call me Rabbit, I'm not, you know, going to stick around and see what happens. I can jump fences and everything. <laughs> I've done it before, but that time it was one of those ones. Oh, they were all surrounding us. I just, yeah. I just put my hands up. I go, ah. Yeah. It was, and I even told the homies, well, it was fun. Well, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I think the cops were laughing. Yeah. No, they were. They were laughing. They were, they, 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 were they were like, you guys left the house? Yeah. They, they were clowning yeah. us. The homies and, had called the uh, radio station, an oldie radio station, to tell, like, you know, they have dedication or stories. Oh, and, that's right. And, uh, they even mentioned it. My homies, like, Larry Looney he tells tunes. The story, and the, the DJ on the radio is laughing hard. What and song he, was that? What was song was like rolling in the, the rolling in the, slipping in the darkness? Slipping in the darkness. From American. Me. Yeah. me yeah so he he tells the whole story to the dj he literally gets through on the request line to an oldie station yeah tells him the story because we had it all like he recorded it on cassette tape again i'm dating ourselves but yep. um he recorded it and uh told him the whole story and the dj was laughing so hard and literally on cue and what do you want to play? We want to play Slipping in the Darkness. <laughs> yeah, man. Good times, yeah, homies. <laughs> hey, any of the homies listening, man, I appreciate all you motherfuckers. And you know what? Let's all keep doing positive shit. Keep raising our kids right like we've been doing, man. I'm proud of all the homies, um, you included, uh, Roman. Thank you, guys. Um, it is as well uh, an honor for us to for you guys to be partners because we're on the same level now. And then... Yeah. You know, with the goalkeeper up there, she's a hustler, man. So we're going to make this shit happen, man. I appreciate you dudes. Um, And we'll see you guys on the next episode, Rabbit Season Podcast. We did it again, man. Thank you guys that tuned in.